Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on solving equations using addition and subtraction. Our objectives today are that you will model solving one-step equations using algebra tiles, and you will solve equations using addition or subtraction. The question I'd like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson is what are inverse operations? First, let's talk about an equation. What is an equation? An equation is a mathematical sentence with an equal sign between two expressions. So often students confuse that math is an actual language, just like English. When you speak English or Spanish or any other language, math is a language and we need to learn how to interpret and read it. So this is a math sentence which is also known as an equation. So we have one expression, x plus three, and it is equal to the expression seven. Remember, it's a numerical expression with just one term. In our previous unit of study, we talked about expressions and constants and algebraic expressions. So we have the algebraic expression x plus three set equal to the expression seven, and it's a statement of equality. So what we are going to focus on today is finding out what is the value of x that makes this equation true. We're going to use algebra tiles first to model how to solve an equation. Algebra tiles are used to represent variables and numbers, and they can be used to simplify algebraic expressions. So variable tiles look like this. In my class, we call them the long green, which is an x, and the long red represents negative x. And then we have our constant tiles, where we have a little square yellow, which represents positive one, and a square red, which represents negative one. And we're gonna use these today to model finding the solution of an equation. So here is my mat. You can see that I have my workspace here. And this line right here represents our equal sign. So we're going to model one side equal to the other. So we're gonna use algebra tiles to do this. So we have an X, so I need a long green, and I have plus one, so I'm gonna add a yellow square. Now, on the right side, after my equal sign, I need four yellows, because I need to have a total of positive four on the right side of my mat. So now, this represents the equation X plus one equals four. Now my whole goal is to find out what this long green, what this X is equal to. I need to get this all alone because I wanna know what just this is equal to. So we've learned in previous units that we can create zero pairs. So if I add a red square, this is negative one, and together these equal zero, leaving me just X. But when I have an equation, I have to keep equality. So whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I must do to the other. So if I add a red square here, a negative one, I have to also add a negative one to the right side of the equation. Now I can identify that I have a zero pair and I can remove those from my workspace because it equals zero and does not change the value of the equation. Over here, I identify my zero pair and I'm also going to remove that because zero is not helping change the value of this. So when I take them away, I'm left with X is equal to one, two, three. And we can check to see if that's true. If I replace X with three, three plus one is four. So it checks. Now let's try one with negative two. So I'm gonna model it again my x, my long green, and two negatives. So this represents x minus two. On the right side, I need to model five. So I need five positive yellow squares. There are my five. So this is x minus two equals five. Now again, I wanna solve for x. I need x all alone. So I need to force this to be zero. To do that, I'm gonna add two yellow squares. So now I have negative two and positive two. Together, those make a zero pair. But if I add two positives to the left side, I must also add two positives to the right side to keep the balance. Remember, whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, 
you must do to the other. Now I can look for zero pairs. So I can identify that these are two zero pairs and I can remove those from my workspace. My right side is all positive. I do not have any zero pairs. So we'll remove our zero pairs. And now I'm left with x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the solution is x equals 7. I can check this. If x is equal to 7, 7 subtract 2 equals 5. It checks. It's your turn. I would like you to use algebra tiles to model solving this equation. Go ahead and pause the video now and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So I'm modeling my equation, x and two positive tiles. On the right side, I need a negative one. So that's one red square. Again, we're solving for x. I need to get x all alone. So to force my zero pairs, I'm gonna add two red integer tile chips here. And that means I need to add two reds to the right side to keep the equality. Whatever I do to the left, I must do to the right. So now I identify zero pairs. I only have two zero pairs on the left. There are no two, there are no zero pairs to the right of the equal sign. So let's remove our zero pairs from our workspace. And we're left with x is equal to one, two, negative three. Because they're red, it's negative three. So now I can go check. If x is equal to negative three, negative three plus two is negative one. It checks. I'd like you to try another one. Go ahead and pause the video here and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So let's set up our workspace. We need a long green and three negative integer tiles. On the right side of our workspace, we need four red integer tiles for four negative four. Now again, we want to get x all alone, so I'm going to force zero pairs here. To do that, I need to add three yellow positive one integer chips here. If I add three to the left, I need to also add three to the right to keep the balance. Now I'm going to identify zero pairs. I have one, two, three zero pairs on the left and one, two, three zero pairs on the right. So let's remove those from our workspace so we can identify our solution. I'm left with x is equal to negative one. Let's check. Negative one, subtract three. Negative one, add the opposite. So negative one, add negative three is indeed negative four. It checks. So now that we have modeled this with algebra tiles, let's move along and start solving them using an algebraic method. First, we need to understand inverse operations. Inverse operations are two operations that have the opposite effect. Inverse operations undo each other. So much like we were making our zero pairs, what we were really doing is understanding that addition and subtraction are inverse operations and they undo each other. If I have two purple candies here, purple circles, whatever you want to call them. If I have two and I've added them to my workspace, to undo add them to my workspace, I take them away or subtract them and I'm left with zero. If we talk about the number two, if I subtract two, that undoes creating the two. If I add two, take two away by subtracting, I get zero. If I start with negative two to create my zero, I now need to add two to it. So think about owing somebody money. How do you undo owing somebody money? You pay them back, you give them $2. So think of adding as giving and subtracting as taking away. And that's exactly what we did with our algebra tiles to create zero pairs. Now we're gonna do that algebraically to solve some equations we're going to use the addition property of equality. So to solve an equation algebraically, we're gonna use properties of equality to create equivalent equations. Remember, we must keep the balance. So the addition property of equality states that when you add the same number to each side of an equation, the equation remains the same, creating an equivalent equation. 
So what this equivalent equation really means is your solution, x equals a number, is an equation. You have a variable x equal to a value. That is an equation because it has an equal sign saying that a variable is equal to a number. So if I tell you that a equals b, and I add c to each side of the equation, giving us a plus c equals b plus c. So because I've done the same action to both sides, I've added c to both sides, this equation is the same as this equation. Let's try it with numbers. I'm going to solve, and I'm going to also check my solution. So I'm given x subtract 9 equals 14. So now you can see our numbers are getting a little bit bigger, and it's not practical to use algebra tiles. So now I'm asking myself, I want to know what x is equal to. So I'm going to ask myself, what is happening to x? x is being subtracted by 9. The inverse of subtract 9, to undo this, I'm going to add 9. And if I add 9 to the left side of the equal sign, I must add it to the right. So now I can identify this is my zero pair, leaving me just x. So now I just need to do this math. 14 plus 9 is 23. So again, this is 0, so it's x plus 0, or zero, or just x. Take away your 0 pair, and 14 plus 9 is 23. Now let's check our solution. You should always check. If what we did is true, we replace x with 23. 23 subtract 9 needs to be 14, and indeed it is. It checks, and my solution is x equals 23, noting that x equals 23 is an equation, and it's an equivalent equation to x subtract 9 equals 14. So these represent the same thing. One is just a solution. Your turn. I would like you to solve this using the property we just learned instead of using algebra tiles. Please pause and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So let's see what we have here x subtract 11. To undo subtract 11 and get x alone, I need to create a zero pair. I'm going to do that by undoing subtract 11, which is to add 11. And what I do to the left side, I must do to the right. So now I have my zero pair, leaving me just x because this is zero. And negative 5 plus 11 is positive 6. So my solution is x equals 6. I hope you checked. Let's check our solution. We're going to replace x with our found solution, saying x equals 6. So we're going to replace x with 6. 6 subtract 11 needs to equal negative 5 if we did our math correctly. 6 subtract 11, add the opposite. 6 and negative 11 are negative 5, and it checks. Our solution is x equals 6. Now let's talk about the subtraction property of equality. This states that when you subtract the same number from each side of an equation, the equation remains the same, creating an equivalent equation. So if I say that a is equal to b, and remember these are just variables representing values, and I subtract c from a, I must subtract c from the other side of the equation as well, and this gives me a minus c equals b minus c. This is an equivalent equation to this. I've subtracted the same number or the same value from both sides. So this is why the subtraction of a pr property of equality works. Let's use it in this example. So I identify that I'm solving for x, and it's being added by 13. The inverse of add 13, to undo this, we need to take it away or subtract 13. So if I subtract 13 from this side of the equal sign, I must do it to the other side. I have to keep equality to keep this true. Now I have a zero pair, leaving me just x plus zero or x. So 24 subtract 13, 4 subtract 3 is 1, 2 subtract 1 is 1, giving me 11. Let's check our work. I'm going to replace x here with 11. So 11 plus 13 needs to equal 24. 11 plus 13 is indeed 24. It checks, and my solution is x equals 11. Now it's your turn. 
I would like you to use the property we just learned. Go ahead and solve. Don't forget to check. Pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So I have x and the inverse of add 19 is to subtract 19. If I subtract it from the left, I must also subtract it from the right to keep the equality. This is my zero pair. So I'm left with x on the left. Negative 11 and negative 19 are negative 30. 1 plus 9 is 10. 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. Both are negative, so I add and keep the negative sign. So my solution is x equals negative 30, but one more step. We need to check our work. I'm going to replace x in the original equation with negative 30. Negative 30 plus 19, two different signs. 30 subtract 19 is 11, and the larger is negative. So negative 11 equals negative 11. It checks, and my solution is x equals negative 30. Your turn. I would like you to try to solve both of these. Now you can see really why we can't use algebra tiles all the time. We have fraction and decimals. So go ahead and pause. Don't forget to check your solutions. Come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So let's start here. We have x plus 4 fifths. The inverse of add 4 fifths is to take away or subtract 4 fifths. What I do to the left, I must do to the right. So here's my zero pair. Positive 4 fifths and negative 4 fifths are zero, leaving me x. Now let's do this. They're both negative, so I'm going to add and keep the sign. So 2 fifths plus 4 fifths. Add the common denominator already. Add the numerators. 2 plus 4 is 6. They're both negative, so I keep the negative sign. Now let's check our work. We're going to replace x with negative 6 fifths. So to check, negative 6 fifths plus 4 fifths. I have a common denominator. I keep it. They're negative 6 is larger than 4. The absolute value of negative 6 is larger than the absolute value of 4, so I know it's going to be negative. 6 subtract 4 is 2. Negative 2 fifths, and it checks. Our solution is x equals negative 6 fifths. Let's check this one. We're solving for x. x is being subtracted by 1.4. The inverse of subtract is to add. So we're going to add 1.4 to the left and to the right. Here's my zero pair, leaving me just x. And now negative 3.7 and 1.4, two different signs. So I'm going to subtract the smaller absolute value from the larger. 7 minus 4 is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. I take the sign of the larger absolute value. Now we're going to check our work. I'm going to replace x with negative 2.3. Negative 2.3 add the opposite, so both the same sign. 2.3 plus 1.4 is 3.7, keeping my negative sign. It checks, and my solution is x equals negative 2.3. There you have it. That's how you solve algebraic equations using addition and subtraction. I hope that helped you out today and that you learned and can relate to using algebra tiles to our properties of equality and creating zero pairs. And I hope you'll come back soon and join me at the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Have a great day.